Merry Christmas one and all, welcome to a K5 Hall of Mania video. There's going to be a few parts to this one, so uh, I want you to tuck in, get your hot chocolate and enjoy. This vid's going to be mainly Matchbox and Hot Wheels, so let's ch 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 check it out. Okay, before we take a look at all that lovely Matchbox and Hot Wheels stuff that I've been finding, we'll have a quick look at these uh, couple of real toys that I picked up. Now, I picked up this uh, Nissan Skyline GTR vehicle, uh, mainly to replace the one that I've given to Mr. Shear. So thanks again, Mr. Shear, for that amazing parcel over there in Tampa. Fabulous stuff. But I also picked up a um, an Audi TT, and um, I didn't have any Audi TTs in my collection. You don't see them around too often, so I'd be looking forward to hopefully comparing that to, there must be a Matchbox or a Hot Wheel one out there somewhere, but wouldn't that be cool? Okay, let's move into the Matchbox zone. So, right, now then, as you can see there, I've got a I've got one in a box, and I picked that up just in case Frisian needed one, and Thomas, it's for you. Um, so I did open one, I took some photographs of this, this really, really cool model. Um, yeah, it's probably the coolest uh, National Parks vehicle that's come out this year. Um, I do collect these particular types of vehicles. It doesn't matter what they are. As long as it's got the logo, I'm bringing it home. And uh, isn't isn't it good? Absolutely fantastic. Interesting uh, ram bar on the front there. Probably for pushing logs out the way, I should imagine. Although I do believe that these people are... In for law enforcers too so uh, let's have a take a look at the side there's got a bear on the side what a lovely piece this box very hard to get hold of right now in the UK well it has been for quite a while went to Poundland um, all the Poundland cards there only cost a pound a pop all long card of course I do believe these are international long cards as well so uh, nothing uber special there just for the fact that they're long cards uh, I found a couple of these mothers, very cool, and I found finally the missing Alfa Romeo 4C. So I think I have all of these now, all the different colours. There's a red one, white one, and this one, which is awesome. Um, also picked up this piece here. This is from where did I get this one from? Goodness me, Asda probably. This is an older, an older model, an older, yeah, came out quite a while ago. So that was nice to see that suddenly appear in the pods on the floor. Fabulous thing. The Aston Martin DBS Volante. Had to have it, what a beautiful thing in champagne. Oh man, can't wait to open that up at some point. Um, some cars we are gonna open up though. Found these again at Asda, finally. So we're gonna check this one out, nothing exciting on the back, they're all very generic. This is the new Miata. Wow, what a thing. Let's have a look around this car. Wow, that's some thick windscreen glass on there. That should please the uh, the windscreen glass breakers out there. That is serious. Well done, Matchbox there, thinking ahead. I mean, that is proper chunky. Chunky! Lovely tan poses, of course. Really, really enjoying the uh, Matchbox pieces with their tampos at the moment. So like they've had a new, uh, a new heart of uh, design. Look at the rear on that. Crikey, I'm loving that piece in vibrant sort of uh, fuchsia red. What a thing! Serious chunk, look at that. What a thing! Brilliant piece. Thank you very much, Matchbox. And also, I found this this truck here. It's the 13 Ford Cargo. I'm gonna get that one out as well. I'm guessing these are, are probably around about 187 scale. Could be wrong. Does it say on the bottom? Does it? Does it go back that far in the world? No, uh, they stopped putting the um, the sizes of these vehicles on the bases now, which is a bit of a shame. But that's a nice piece, isn't it? The Ford Cargo. Good Ford Tampos on there. All this uh, black piece at the back here is all plastic. And they plunked a bit of metal up top. Does it have an interior? Hmm. Seems to be the uh, the in thing right now with Matchbox is uh, a lack of interior, which is a shame. Things Times are changing, but it does have a, a hole there if you want to pull something around, so that would be interesting. I'll have to see if we can do some of that. Very nice piece, quite light actually. Oh, nice 
nice couple of pieces here. We got this, I think this is the new Land Rover. So we're gonna pop that out, have a look inside. I'd like to compare this to the old Land Rover. I believe that they've, uh, they've made the casting a bit smaller, which is a shame, but it still seems to have kept its character, which is not a shame. And it also has an interior. Featuring an interior! <laughs> you can see it now in the future, can't you? The uh, Matchbox headlines. Yeah, so that's still a plastic piece on the top there. We've got all our jerry cans and toolboxes, or is that a lunchbox back there? Who knows? Some kind of uh, chainsaw on the top there. Nice piece though. Still, still looking good. Very good indeed. Love Matchbox Land Rovers. Got the set of these now. Yeah, James Shear enlightened me on this one. I had no idea what the uh, the final vehicle in this set, in this set would be, and um, turns out it was this tow truck. As you can see on the back there, it's got the Heralda 28 MBX on there. Support team, Club 5000. Fantastic. And uh, I was looking into these vehicles as you do, and I realised that. Uh, they had something very interesting on, written on the side of them. It was uh, that Swisher Motors. So I looked back through my uh, Hot Wheels um, archive, as it were. So we're going to get all these out now. So they're all here to, to show you the full set of the Heralda vehicles. I think in Heralda is the um, uh, one of the designers, so it must be a special celebration for him. And I was looking through my old vehicles, and I realised that. Um, Heralda had been around for a little while and also Swisher Motors and uh, I dug out this first edition 98 from 1998 Swisher Motors Ford Escort and it is it needs to come out it's been waiting to come out for quite a long time I've got this a few years back I was out there at one of those car, car fairs with uh, my mate Justin and uh, we had to fight over this one and I won <laughs> but there it is there's the, uh, and as you can see on the side there, it says Swisher Motors. And if you look very closely down the bottom there, it says Heralda as well. And this is an awesome little piece. Look at all those extra tampos there. Back in the day, this is Hot Wheels doing a good, good job on this beautiful little uh, Escort Mark IV. Fantastic. There we go. Escort Rally. As you can see, if you can just see inside there, it's got the spare tyre sitting on where the passenger would normally sit. I suppose if you're the uh, mechanic, you might want to sit on the on that. <laughs> Who knows? And it's got the luggage compartment where it should be. Um, it's got an interesting spoiler made out of the windscreen material, but not actually connected to the windscreen. Interesting. Could have been um, a different colour that maybe. Who knows? It actually has a little steering wheel in there and a little driver's seat and some other luggage down there by the side of the, that could be the co-pilot's chair actually. And also it's got a roll cage as well. So brilliant little piece from match, uh, from Hot Wheels. Absolutely splendid. Looking forward to taking some pictures of that one. Oh. Here's the back of that uh, escort box. Not a lot on there, unless it's your birthday. Busy, haven't they? So, uh, first of all, we'll have a look at what I found. All this stuff again from Asda. 
picked up the Dodge Charger uh, Fast and the Furious film car. Oh my word, I had to watch that film again. This poor thing, did not take a beating, didn't it? Well, there you go. <laughs> I suppose they'll probably have to release the bullet hole version of this one, isn't it? But no, this was a, a great little uh, star in the uh, film uh, for its whole 10 minutes of, uh, if that, of uh, viewage. And uh, pretty much remained in this condition for a very short time indeed. Falling out of aeroplanes and all Another one of these warthogs. Uh, probably keep this one in the box for now, who knows. Well, yeah, I kind of like it a lot actually. It's gonna. It's a, just a military vehicle and it's, uh, it is awesome. Um, picked up a kit. And here it is, another Knight Rider. Good to see the Knight Riders are back out there again. This is probably the definitive variant of this uh, particular vehicle. Excellent budget uh, affordability. And uh, yeah, we're getting it in the UK, so it's got to be good. And uh, also, found one of these. Oh God, I <laughs> just had to have this one. When you got to go, you got to go. And uh, oh, we can have a closer look at this one. Now, is this the replacement for the hot seat? Who knows? So let's see what this one does. Oh yes, the seat lifts. Brilliant, brilliant bit of hygiene there. And if you look around the back of the piece, it's got a little uh, toilet roll there for the, the number plate at the back. <laughs> oh wow, look, oh, something's gonna happen here. So we're gonna find out what that is in a minute. And uh, yep, yeah, so that's the back of the, to the loo there. I was looking for some kind of flushing device. It doesn't have that. But it does have a urinal for uh, the, f the front grill, absolutely brilliant. A great tongue in the cheek piece from uh, from Hot Wheels. Gotta go when you gotta go. Okay, we've got some more fast cars. Look at this, the new uh, Corvette racer. Yep, I saw a few of these in the States, didn't pick them up, I thought I'd just wait, hold on. And I was right to do so because it turned up in the UK. Awesome. Uh, had to get that. Just say boy racery. I think I've got this one in the original colour. I think it was red and white. And now it's coming out with these uh, tampos on the side. So that's awesome. And we got a Fangula. Well, I believe this is the, uh, the ouch, the tea hunt from uh, is it the B case or something like that, something along those lines. B case, C case. I've got no idea what case we're on over here right now. Um, literally the Hot Wheels have just started coming into Asda so uh, you want to get down to Asda and check it out. I do like my Fangulas, I love the black Fangulas so I kind of collect black ones if I can. Now you can see the uh, the much um, <laughs> sought after Treasure Hunt logo. Yeah there you go. Yeah. I'm not officially collecting Treasure Hunts right now but uh, there it is. Just, there we go, it's just less stress to not collect them. The metal base, metal body, what a piece. I just, I don't know, this thing just appealed to me in yellow. Really, really nice thing. I believe I've got the white James Bond version, so um, nice to see it in yellow. Very cool. I think that was in Tesco's that one. So yeah, Tesco's and Asda. Tesco's uh, were, have been uh, promoting, um, I don't know, it's like a, a garage, a big old garage. It's like 70 odd quid for this huge garage. Picks up another Mia, so this time this one does not have any, hopefully, does not have any um, faults with it. So. So we, I would like to compare this extensively with the uh, Matchbox model, which I also have. Um, there we go. Well, the Matchbox one appears to be slightly longer. Both of them are sporting the super thick windscreens. Uh, actually, the windscreen is really, really similar. Hmm. Is, <laughs> is it the same part, one, one would ask? Uh, mm. So the mat, the obviously the Matchbox one is the looks like a stock car, and the Hot Wheels version is the souped-up Halfords model. So we'll go around the back there. Look, you can see we've got uh, quite a lot of sportitious accessories on the rear end there, including a monster great uh, wing. Must be for keeping that back end down. 
but overall it's a very similar colour as well. Must be the proper Mazda red I would have thought. It's taken a while to find this piece and uh, I'm going to open it up. This is the, it's not a super, this is like the last, the last chance for me to find this model. Um, I'm not so sure if it came out in the A case as well, but isn't she gorgeous? This is the, of course, the brand new uh, Ford GT. Wow. Splendid thing. Full of technology and in that lovely, uh, Ford, it's like an aqua blue, beautiful colour, liquid blue or something it's called, isn't it? It's a brilliant, brilliant piece. Fantastic. The 17 Ford GT. Food for thought. Yet to see one on the roads. Well, I know there's loads of you out there enjoy looking at the old stuff, and I did actually manage to find some really old pieces here, and it's it's, uh, it's quite special, some of these bits, actually. They're all from the 1950s. Some of them are from the early 50s, but most of them are from around about 1950, I'd say 57, 58. Um, we're gonna jump straight in with uh, this piece here. Wow. It just looks, it feels old, my word. Now this is an old, um, it's an old piece from uh, a company called Charben or Charben, and Charben is a, an amalgamation of two names, Charles and Ben, obviously, Benedict. And these two guys, they started up a toy company in the UK in 1929. Um, mostly, uh, they back then, back before the war, the, the toys were made of lead and. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't like to handle those old lead toys that A, they'll probably just fall apart in the hand and B, they'd be quite toxic. But this is um, a piece from a collection, I think it's known as the, oh, I can't remember now, the vintage, vintage, vintage Bangers or something. I'll write the name below. <laughs> I did do a little bit of research, but it was a while ago after I picked it up. And of course this one's missing its back axle, but it is uh, retaining its all metal uh, wheels there. And uh, if you notice, the base on this is a tin plate, and it's uh, sort of basically two castings held together horizontally, and then actually sta stapled together with this uh, this tin plate base. Very, very interesting piece. I believe it's some kind of Ford, but I could be wrong. It might even be a French car, judged by that. Actually, it's probably more likely to be some kind of French car from the 1920s or before. Fabulous thing. But that's not the star of the show. Oh, no, 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 no. We got ourselves a bus. And this is awesome. Now, there was absolutely very, very minimal detail on this uh, when it came out. Uh, I believe it's from the same series of toys as that particular piece, the little blue car. But this is actually known as Old Bill. Not to be mistaken, of course, with the police force. Old Bill is the, a nickname probably given to this style of uh, bus, which was... Uh, driven around in London between 1914 and probably about 1920, taken out of service, open top. Some of you will recall, um, I, I've got some of these actually made by Matchbox, but this is quite a playful addition. Big old boxy uh, front end on that. And it actually states on there, Charben's Toys, and it says General there. So that's the name of the bus, the General Bus, or the Old Bill fabulous thing again just just two halves of metal clunked together I'm looking all around the vehicle and there's not an awful lot of detail in there I'm gonna but I, I'm gonna save sort of something from around about 1956 or thereabouts fabulous kids toy of course back then the um, made of Zamac as well and uh, the Zamac is there's a lot of lead in the Zamac still so if you look at this particular piece the lead has caused the uh, the thing to start crumbling at the back there. 
hopefully the same cannot be said for this piece. Oh, another thing I, which I thought was quite entertaining was the uh, the actual use of uh, panel pins. Check those panel pin axles out. I literally just clamped at the end there just to hold the wheel on. Very precarious stuff. But it seems to have worked. That is just solid, solid chunky stuff. Am I going to start collecting char bins? Well, I suppose if I see them around, I'll pick them up. There's another piece that I, uh, I had to grab. This is an, a budgie. First glance, it looks like a moco. From around about the same time period as the mocos. Um, and again, you can tell it's, it's age by the fact it's got plastic wheels and both ends are uh, mushroomed. So this is probably from about 1958-59. Tells you what it is on the base there. The Rover 105 Rover Matic. So it was a, probably like a P2 or something like that. Absolutely wonderful thing. This is the uh, your poor man's Rolls Royce, basically. These things uh, really are um, kind of, I wouldn't say super affordable for your average guy. And look at the, um, but they are affordable. <laughs> you would see them on uh, normal people's uh, runways. If you look there, it's also got uh, interesting shotgun doors as well. Very interesting. Do like that. And, um, oh, we found a grail. This is what stopped me up when I was at the, uh, when I was walking past that stall in the market. This caught my eye. Now, this is a, well, it's from about 1961, 62. This is the old taxi, Austin taxi. And this this particular example, as they are, number 17, this particular example is extremely mashed up but saying that it reminds me incredibly of the one that I used to have as a kid and this is one of the pieces I have been searching high and low for and um, I'm showing it to you in its current state because this is how I found it and I'm really hoping that I can uh, fix it up a little bit as you can see there it's got a little man driving it super cool there he is Awesome! What a lovely thing. Of course, uh, not in not available in black, which is odd. I always thought that, that being red, it was uh, quite quite an unusual colour. We're now going to have a look at. Here it is, and here it is from 1956. It's number 22A, the uh, indomitable Vauxhall Cresta. And this is, uh, has been blessed possibly with the uh, distinction of being the first saloon car in the um, Matchbox Moco lineup. Um, as we can see, it's got all the traits of a 1956 car. Um, yes, it doesn't tell you what it is on the base, but thankfully there is lots of information out there on this particular uh, branch of uh, automobilia, unlike uh, other stuff. <laughs> But uh, I was able to um, obviously find out quite a lot about it. It was uh, deleted in 1958, so it was only around for a couple of years. Deleted by 22B, which was also Vauxhall Cresta and a lot, a lot more popular as models go. And this particular model um, was developed in order to uh, tow the caravan. It's also not only is it one of the first uh, cars uh, that Moco made that was actually a saloon car. It was also one of the first cars designed to actually tow something as well. So. Uh, it's got a lot of kudos this particular car and uh, I believe I sent a couple of these out to uh, to Japan so uh, you know all good things they uh, they come back in the end and the nice thing about this one is that it is in very very good condition you can even see the spray marks there where it was where the uh, it's been masked off and sprayed over the top of this cream color so all in all a very very nice piece I'm very, very happy to have it in my collection, finally, and not have to worry about it, because I'm very happy with this piece. Um, some interesting features of this particular model are the fact that it is a late model, and you can tell that by the uh, the brace there on the wheel. So Cozy, if any of yours don't have the brace on there, they're from 1956, so this makes this probably from around about 1957, early 58. And there we go. Fantastic stuff. Thanks for watching, ta-ta for now.